My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. And this podcast is all about bringing people from around the world, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, doing remarkable things with their time. Today I have with me Gregory Manorino. So please, Gregory, tell the world, who are you? What are you doing? What's your story? What do you believe in? And what difference are you making in the world? Well... Who am I? I'm I'm just I'm just a guy out here who who's really trying to make a difference. Honestly, uh, let me give you a little background here. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I've been out here. I think now, uh, hmm, probably for about six years, talking about the markets, trading, um, trying to give people an idea. Uh, of, of how this system works, how the financial system actually works. What prompted me to do this was uh, the 2008 market meltdown. Um, it affected my life. It affected many people that were very close to me that still are very close to me. Some of my very best friends got wiped out. Um, I got to know a lot about what really uh, was behind that meltdown uh, and why we are destined to repeat this uh, again. And it's going to be much worse uh, the next time around. So what I'm trying to do here uh, is really try to make people understand that they don't have to lay down and be fleeced the next time. Then, And it's going to be a, a next time where we have a meltdown here across uh, the financial system, um, and how do we know what's going to happen again? Because it, it always does. It's a, it's a repetitive cycle, and um, if people are in the right spots before uh, these things occur, um, again, they don't have to get destroyed from a financial standpoint like like last time. And the other thing for me, what I believe in here is I do believe that all of us have a responsibility to each other. And this is a way for me to pay it forward. Um, and I think it's just so important for people to embrace that kind of a mentality, understand that, you know, there are those that would like to keep us separated by everything they can separate us by. Um, you know, whether it's race, whether it's uh, sexual orientation, whether it's whatever. Um, and we got to get that. You got to, we got to get out of that. Um, this is how the few have, have controlled the many, uh, since uh, the beginning of time. And unfortunately we, the people of the world continue to fall into this trap. Uh, we got to break out of that kind of thinking. So um, I, I think if we can just understand that, again, we have a responsibility to each other. And, and that's really what brings me out here and try to enlighten people as to what is, is going on uh, right under their noses and how they're being uh, fooled by the mainstream media, uh, how they're being told to look here, look here. No, no, no. But don't look over here. Uh, again, I think that alternative media, alternative news is where people are turning to who I think have a few functioning brain cells. At least I would like to believe that. And I think it's catching on. I really do. So I think shows like this is just so important. It really is. It's, it's a fact. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Shows like this are really important because I find that with the alternative media, it's, it's that essentially the free market stepping up and playing a role in getting the message out, bypassing, mm -hmm. well, bypassing government goons with regards to state-enforced you know, television, with regards to just you know just too big to fail almost media, even if that's a if that's a phrase, too big to fail. You mm -hmm. know, CNN, too big to fail. Who knows who else? Where <laughs> exactly. they're going to be around, no matter how good or bad the reporting is. And, and in this click in the click economy now, where it's more about ratings, you know. The Russia thing and nothing burger, but good for ratings. That's all that matters, un unfortunately. Absolutely. It's so true. Um, it's disgusting. It really is. It's absolutely disgusting what this whole thing has devolved into. But again, it is the free market. And I love the way you put that because I believe that the free market is going to – will always win. Uh, it's the collective consciousness of, of, of us all. So you can have the few out there that want to twist things and manipulate things. Um, but again, over time, it just doesn't work. It never does. 
Um, and, and I think that analogy can be applied to, again, a lot of the fake news uh, and also the fake markets right now. There is no real market um, right now. It's, uh, it's, it's completely distorted, completely twisted, being run by runaway world central banks who uh, have created a financial monster of truly epic proportions. And that's why this the next time, and it's going to come. When? I don't know. I don't even speculate on it anymore. We know it's going to happen where all of this corrects to a fair value. And it's going to feel like collapse, but it's really not going to be a collapse at all. It's just the market doing its sole job, and that is to determine fair value. Um, again, the free market doing its thing. Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm more of an inv- I'm more of a value investor, so I'm much more big picture, long term thing. But I do remember that um, McDonald's, maybe a year ago, a few months ago, I couldn't remember. Their share price was still going up, but at the same time, their earnings were all time low, or a lot of their stores were closing. So the massive, mm-hmm. massive, um, what's the word? Mismatch between the stock <laughs> exchange and the Dow, twenty two thousand more or less, and what's happening in in the real world, you know, in Main Street, in, and they call it in the States. So it's fascinating mm-hmm. what's going on there. What, what, mm-hmm. do, what do you attribute that to? These are dis- these are distortions that, that are being created across the spectrum of every single asset class, not just one particular stock or one particular group of stocks, um, by a, a, a runaway central bank, the, the Federal Reserve. Look, it's a very simple concept to understand, and, and I, I want people to pay attention to this. When you have world central banks, and let's stick to the Federal Reserve uh, for right now, that has taken the largest part of the market, which is the debt market, and artificially suppressed interest rates for the better part of a decade. No asset has a real price discovery mechanism behind it at all. So when you're looking at housing, when you're looking at currency, when you're looking at precious metals, when you're looking at a particular company, you can't really value it because, again, nothing is real. The the debt market has been twisted and, and, and pulled in every direction except the right one. The Fed is – and all world the world central banks are not allowing the free market to dictate and determine the fair value for debt. So if they're not doing that, then nothing else has a price discovery mechanism. We have massive – massive malinvestments across the spectrum. Again, there's nothing out here, not one single asset that anyone can point to that has a real price discovery mechanism behind it. And that is a frightening, frightening thing to, to, to ponder because this all of this is going to correct to fair value. You have people like Alan Greenspan uh, uh, last week or the week before sounding a hell of a lot like Greg Manorino over the past X amount of years where I've been talking about a debt bubble uh, and, and how everything has been hyperinflated, including the stock market and housing on the back of that bubble. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people have given me a uh, heat over that over the years, but now we have a former Fed president. I mean, he must watch my, 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 my shows because this, he sounds exactly like me. Um, and, and finally, to hear him come out like that and talk about how the debt is in a bubble and how the market is not recognizing it, well, that really does sound like me. So I think people need to start waking up to, we, you know, this, we're watching this the whole thing unfold right before our eyes here, how the markets are disconnected from what's going on on Main Street. Um, and that, that we've seen this before. This is the same scenario playing out over and over again. When when you get these kinds of scenarios, they always end very badly for the guy or the girl on Main Street. While the big corporations and the big banks, they come out, you know, they're all fine. So I think that's what people need to understand is they 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 can do something about it now before these things unfold and when they when they really start to get moving here look there's going to become a point of maximum saturation with with regard to the debt where we cannot where world central banks can't just continue to buy everything because that's what they've been doing to keep this entire thing just propped up so at one point here and i don't know when that is but it's going to happen um we could face a truly 
uh, epic moment when, again, when we come, when the debt becomes saturated, we cannot borrow anymore from the future just to sustain where we are on a global level, and we could have pandemonium on a global level uh, where people aren't able to even get, I mean, in an extreme situation, uh, basic things like go to the store and buy a loaf of bread or something because, again, this is how extreme these distortions are. They are truly out of control. I saw your video today you uploaded yeah, about four or so hours ago, um, and you talked about it, that the central bank, like Yellen and all the rest, that they would never be able to reduce the balance sheet of the you know, Federal Reserve. Mm-hmm. And I've heard this argument for years and years, when, even when back quantitative easing was still you know what number one. What I could never understand from a pure practical sense is, couldn't the central bank, couldn't Yellen or Goons or whoever, take all the actual currency they've printed, the notes, go into the back garden, the backyard, and burn it with a flamethrower or recycle it, you know, in the furnace or a pulping machine. And, or if it, even if it's just digital to reduce the balance sheet, just, you know, the space, but the backspace a few times or the, the delete button a few times, get rid of some digits. <laughs> I like that's that. What, yeah. Well, that's when, when they always say they're never going to reduce the balance sheet. I agree, but I'm thinking, wouldn't it just be easy to burn a few tons of paper or get a few, a few digits? It's not as simple as that. How, how complicated is that? Well, yeah, what we have to understand is all, the currency is a unit of debt, as we all know. These are not units of wealth. They are units of debt. And it's all part of the, the – the, I can't even stress this enough – this unbelievably epic bubble in debt, bonds, and everything else that's connected to it. Now, each one of these bills here uh, that they're that they're, they're printing out of thin air, adding to a digital screen more, more than likely, um, it is it, – it's so hard to get your head around this. But each one of these bills here, in order to – whether it's digital or, or printed – has to get value from somewhere. Where is it getting its value from? Where do they get their value from? It's, each bill has to, or, or printed bill has to steal value from a previously existing printed or digital bill here. So this is part of the debt bubble here that needs to be sustained by any and all measures. If they were, what I'm trying to lead up to, to go out there and take a flamethrower or, <laughs> or hit the delete button here, it would cause fractures and an eventual melting down of the bubble in debt, which they cannot do. They have to find reason after reason and create reason after reason to continue to borrow cash into the, into existence. They can never get rid of it. Once it's here, they have to continue to add to it because if they did not add to it, again, it would, it would cause the debt bubble to rupture. The system is debt dependent. Um, it, it's Again, it's difficult to get your head around here, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense. People say, hey, why can't they do something like that? Because, again, it's the nature of the beast. It's a debt-based economic model that demands that the cash be borrowed into existence in perpetuity in greater and greater amounts, in greater and greater amounts. It can never stop. Once it stops or they decide to flamethrow them or they decide to hit that delete button, that's it. We hit the party over moment because we've admitted that we cannot borrow any more cash into existence. So there's the reason, and it, it doesn't make sense to people. But once you understand that these are units of debt and not units of wealth that need and require are required to be pulled from the future just to sustain where we are it makes more sense and again it's a difficult concept to get your head around but but it's really the way it works all right so when you say the the um the debt over wealth so we're we're essentially looking out for a minsky moment then is that kind of like is that like the 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 main metric we're looking for and uh, as an indication as to when the whole thing is going to tip over you know, I think that there are signs right now that there's a lot of trouble on the horizon. Um, the, the, the number one thing is understanding that what we're hearing from the mainstream media about a recovery is all a lie. There is no recovery. And all you need to look at is a few metrics here. Um here in the United States, for example, we have a labor force participation rate near historic lows. We have a money velocity, which is the rate at which cash is moving through our economy, also at a near historic lows. So if you just, in, in order to have a real recovery, these two metrics need to be moving 
higher and they are not. We also need to be looking at the yield curve. The difference between um, um, what a, a short bond is paying, let's say a two-year note versus a 30-year. Um, and this this is flattening out. It's been flattening out for quite a long time. I've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, it, it's getting very minimal coverage only once in a while from the mainstream financial channels, but they don't want you to hear about that. All they want you to know is that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 30 companies, oh, they're doing really well, so just pay attention to that. Ignore what the yield curve is saying, that it's flattening. When you get a flattening yield curve, it's telling us that there's a problem brewing, with regard, especially in this environment, with regard to the debt market. People don't want to hold this long-term debt. So the yield is dropping and flattening, and I believe there is a very high probability it is going to invert. I'm talking about the yield curve, inverting. When every time we've had this, as a matter of fact, let's just look at recent history. Uh, the 2008 event occurred when the yield curve inverted. The dot-com bubble, same thing. So well, people are seeing this right before their eyes, and you know, even the mainstream is covering the yield curve issue. But people keep blowing it off and keep bidding up the market. Big, you know, here, look, the Fed has created a situation where you cannot you, – where else can you be? Um, in other words, people – if you're not invested in the market, there's nowhere else to go. The dollar has been in a downward trajectory for months. We hit a 30-month uh, 30, uh, 30 low, I think it was, against the euro. It was it two weeks ago here? The dollar continues to lose value here. The Federal Reserve is determined to melt the dollar. Um, that is still purchasing power from it. All the world's central banks are doing the same thing. There's a major currency war going on. Uh, it's a race to the bottom here. They're all going to continue to punish their currency. Um, and it's going to hurt the consumer. And that's that's kind of the irony here. It, it just blows my mind when I sit there and I listen to, let's say, CNBC, and they're talking about, oh, the Federal Reserve, you know, continues to miss their inflation targets. Like like having inflation is a good thing. They believe that if you are paying, if we're all paying more for things, oh, we're going to be happier doing that. I, I think it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the consumer, which is going to hurt GDP here in the United States. And this is a phenomenon that's going to occur all over the world. So world central banks, again, have created a monster. Um, and, and at one point, this monster is going to rear its head in everyone's face. Uh, and it, I, I, I hate to think about that moment, but I, it, it's going to occur at one point. And the, the real question is, is it going to unfold in a worst case scenario where, for example, like Alan Greenspan, not just Greg Manorino, says you can get a rapid, rapid sell-off in the bond market. What would that do? That would cause yields to rise and rise rapidly. What would that do? What's the cause and effect? If yields are going to rise rapidly, the cash is now leaving the bond market. This is going to put pressure on the stock markets, which will sell off rapidly along with the debt market. The, the whole thing is going to, in my opinion, I've been saying this for years, is going to begin in the debt market here. We're going to melt down the debt market like Alan Greenspan says could happen. OK, ignore Greg. <laughs> cash leaves there, puts pressure on stocks. Cash And all this cash there isn't going to go to money heaven. It's simply going to look for other places to go here. Once the cash starts moving, that's when we're in a lot of trouble here. I think it's going to go into suppressed assets. I also think... This has the potential to cause massive inflation. The reason why we don't have massive inflation as of yet is because there's no money velocity like I alluded to earlier. The cash isn't moving. Once the cash starts to move, all of these extra bills that we were talking about before about burning and what and deleting, they're going to go chasing the same amount of goods. And when that happens, you have the potential for massive and possibly even hyperinflation. Um, the Fed's going to get it wrong. They always do. They never, ever get it right. So understand, we we need to be ready for a worst-case scenario. The Fed is going to overshoot their inflation target. There's no doubt about it. Look what they're doing to the dollar here. Um, there's going to be a moment when that cash starts to move, and that, my friend, is going to be an epic moment. Uh, and I, I promise to keep all of you on top of it when, when this happens. But right now, the economy is going nowhere, um, again, reflected in the money velocity. And and once that starts to move, I mean, I've been saying this for years, too. We're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. Yes. Um yeah, I understand that. With well, loads of notes to take and loads of things to talk about. 
Uh, with regards to the money velocity, yeah, when that go when that goes skyrocketing, hyperinflation, no chance of deflation. But speaking of which, when you talk about the bond yield, the bond yield curve in, um, inverting, is that the uh-huh. equivalent of negative interest rates then? Well, I think we have negative interest rates now, but what what that what that actually means is that people will want to pay less for a long to hold debt for a longer period of time than they're willing to pay for a short a shorter period a shorter bond, let's say a two year. So again, we've seen this before, and it's happening right now. It's not like I'm making this up or saying it might happen. It is happening. The yield curve getting flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter. This is a big tell that there's trouble on the horizon when nobody can figure that out. And again, I am done trying to trying to trying to even put a, 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 any kind of a time frame on this. But we know it's coming. We know all of this is coming. Um, and instead of sitting there and waiting for it to happen, you got to start thinking ahead. Look, children live in the moment. Animals live in the moment. We as adults cannot afford literally to live in the moment. We need to think down the line. We need to look at what's going on around us here and realize that world central banks do not have our interest uh, in their minds whatsoever. Um, it's the banks, it's the central banks, it's all of these entities here that are going to benefit from a wealth transfer unlike anything we've ever seen. That's what's going to occur. Again, cash is going to move from most people's reality to the reality of a very few in a very rapid, in a very rapid fashion here. But And how do we know it's going to be rapid? Just look at history. Every time these bubbles burst, they burst rapidly. And then you get that massive movement of cash from, again, one reality to another, and and this is how they again can control people um, and uh, allow you know people. I don't really understand the, how the average person. I don't, I don't consider myself an average person because I think I have an idea of how the financial markets work, and most people have no clue as to how the financial markets work. Because if they actually did understand how how the system is so rigged against them, and I mean to the nth possible degree and across the spectrum, uh, they would be very frightened. And, and again, thank thank goodness for shows like this where people can hear some of this stuff because you're not going to hear this ever on CNBC or Bloomberg or any of the mainstream channels. It's not going to happen. Oh, no. They don't want... No. No, I've come to realize that when things are on the news, certainly on the mainstream news, when everyone knows about it, BBC, for example, then it's too late. The money's already been made. The movement's already happened. You know, for example, 10 minutes after the non-farm payroll is broadcast on Bloomberg, all the traders, their positions have already been executed. The money's already been made. So, yeah, that's <laughs> never, never going to have your true interest at heart because it's... <sighs> It's just not that. It's not not the way they work. Same with the government. Whenever they say something, they take, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything exact. Not going to give an example per se, but they they say do this. Well, let's do the opposite then. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Do the opposite of what they're telling you to do, and you're going to be a lot better off. <laughs> That's all you need to know. It's it's that simple, and it's very sad. It really is. And people just sit there like sheep, and they and they line up. Um, and and they they just let things happen to them, and that's what they don't want people to let happen to to them or anyone listening to this show here. Um, I think what you know what's the solution to all this? There really isn't any that's going to be offered by our governments or by world central banks. Going to be in our interest. We understand that world central banks are determined to kill their currencies. So you need to be on the opposite side of that trade. Uh, you need to be in an anti debt. Uh, investment, uh, and I've been an advocate out here for for the better part of a decade, I guess, uh, talking about how important it is to hold physical assets, physical gold, more importantly, physical silver, which I believe is the most undervalued asset in the history of the world. Um, get into start acquiring cryptocurrencies, despite all the nonsense that we're going to be uh, seeing. You're going to see a lot of gyrations here. I told people months ago when when Bitcoin took a pretty big hit. I said it's going to five thousand and beyond. I think we're at forty two hundred today. It's going higher. Um, there's no doubt about it. Again, it's 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 a dollar alternative, and the 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 world central banks they're going to try to punish these things. So be ready for it, just like they've been done to gold, just like they do to silver. Um, they're going to do the same thing to cryptocurrencies as well. But I think it's so important to understand you you got to get out of of these fiat currencies, out of these fiat currencies that are being issued by central banks. 
period, because they are determined to hurt you. They are going to hurt you. So knowing this, you know, you know, I'm not saying everyone should be a hundred percent in any in any one asset. I own all kinds of things. It's important to be diversified here. Um, you can't just say, okay, I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket. No, 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 no. You want to put the least amount of eggs in your most troublesome basket. I mean, that would be holding dollars or euros or whatever. You need to do these things to transact for the most part here. But thinking down the line, not like an animal, not like a child here, you need to be diversified out of the dollar, diversifying out of the dollar. Understand what's going on here with the the central bank issued currencies, which is only going to get worse here. And it makes it very simple to understand what you need to do. Um, you know, me, like I said, I own all kinds of things, but I also trade these markets. I take advantage of of the of what's going on here. I realize it's all overvalued and it's all overpriced here. No doubt about it. But that does not mean that you can't make cash in these markets and then take that cash and convert it into other assets. So play the game. You know, if they, they want to do their thing, fine. We we can play the same game too and we can play it better. Yeah, I find that silver and gold are a good defense. Uh, same with, similar with Bitcoin as well. But the thing just to consider with those is, is it the, the rising, price of, rising price of Bitcoin, is that because of more adoption? Or is it because the money, the currency that it takes to buy one Bitcoin is getting weaker? So <laughs> there's, two, there's two ways around to look at it. I, I, I think both Excellent really. Excellent point. Excellent point. And you hit the nail on the head, too. Yes, of course, that's part of it as well. And we're going to see this manifest itself, not just in Bitcoin, but we're going to see it manifest everywhere here. And that's, again, what the central banks are determined to do. They want you and me and everybody out here, um, you know, needing to acquire more of their debt units by again, weakening the currency. So we need to spend more of these to buy everything, whether it's a Bitcoin, whether it's a shares of stock, whether it's a loaf of bread, whether it's gasoline, doesn't matter. Look, this, the, the central bank's product is debt, period. They, they, they don't do anything else except issue debt. So, and they have to, this is their product. So they have to continue to issue more and more and more and more and more of it just to sustain where we are. And that's what people need to understand is we're going to reach a moment of maximum saturation where where those individuals, whether it's a, uh, an individual like you or I or anyone listening, whether it's a country, whether it's a corporation that is a, a holding all of this debt that we've been hearing since forever, that it's un, it, it's, it can never be paid back. These are liabilities. So there's going to be a point where they're going to get dumped, just like Alan Greenspan said, okay? Not Greg Manorino anymore. Listen to Alan. Alan's saying, okay, there's going to be a moment here or the potential for a moment where there's a rapid sell-off in the debt market. And I, I absolutely think Alan is correct because I've been saying it for years. So um, th- th- there's the issue that we're all facing here and that you're absolutely correct. And I love the way you put that perspective on it. Because it's difficult sometimes for people to understand that when when they're the, the Bitcoin, they say, OK, how many dollars? They're not saying how many units of gold here. They're saying how many dollars buy a Bitcoin? Yeah, it's getting it's going to take more and more of those weaker dollars to buy everything, including Bitcoin. All right. So let's let's take a step back and look at the wider picture. So this is the crash. This is the the you know, pandemonium we face today between now and say 2020 what do you think will be the next crash after that what, what's the next problem afterwards with the standard um, uh, special drawing rights or the or the fdr chips where it's all online the cashless society so this crash we're t- that you're talking about has happened okay then you know 50, 15 years from now what's the next thing to look look after what's the next thing to be aware of then you know shortly after the dot-com crash the thing yeah. to look after then is is real estate. Yeah. Well, what's the see. next thing? Well, because 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 we we have to change where the investments are to you know to stay afloat right now. Avoid dollar dollar denominated dollar denominated investments and go towards more tangible stuff. Uh, you know you got you got a whole variety of things, and you also mentioned Bitcoin and gold. So then that's going to go up. So the potential for that to rise, and all the rest of the potential to crash, is there. But then once these things are you know overpopulated, oversaturated, then what's the next thing, or what's the, what will be the next problem that we will face, or mankind will face, or 
the free market will face once you know yep. central banks are gone or there's a big crash like 08 or much bigger crash that makes 08 and 20, 1929 1929 look like a picnic what's the mm-hmm. next thing to look after you know what's on the horizon then i think that we have to look at it as again a, as this whole thing unfolding in a worst case scenario in a worst case scenario we're looking at a massive correction in human population on the on the globe um, and, and why is that? Again, the debt bar- borrowing for the future allows us to sustain where we are. If we reach a point of maximum debt saturation where we cannot borrow anymore, uh, our way of life is going to change dramatically on a global scale. Um, people will will unfortunately not be able to acquire the basic things that they need to survive. So there's going to be there or there is the potential to be um a a, a, a a a biblical I don't know another way to put this uh, loss loss of life on a global scale here as these resources are no longer available anymore because the debt is in a bubble according to Alan Greenspan not just Greg Manorino anymore so knowing that knowing that 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 is a potential here um, what would the what will the world look like after this? In a worst case scenario, it will be unrecognizable from where we are now. Um, the world um, central banks, uh, which are the governments, are going to um, offer a solution um, in their best interest to the people that are now very easy to control because they're desperate and destitute. So the next thing is who knows what. I can tell you this. It's it's going to unfortunately, and again, a worst case scenario – be something that a, a lot less people uh, are going to have to deal with here. Because, again, there is a potential for pandemonium to break out in the streets of every country on this earth um, as that debt bubble bursts and we're unable to continue to borrow anymore. There's going to be more than likely a completely new system like you were referring to here, a new type of a currency, a new type of a medium of exchange. Um, I would like to think it would be something in our favor. For example, a commodity-backed system, I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately, because that would relinquish control to the people. Uh, if the people had a wealth-based system backed by a commodity, we, the people of the world, would be stronger. They will not allow this to happen. They will never relinquish control now that they have it, um, referring to the world's central banks, which are the government. Um, it's incredible to think about what it will be like afterward here. But but again, this is a, in a worst case here. I think the potential for a worst case scenario is uh, is, is huge, absolutely huge, because the, we've never been here before. There are no models to, to put this against. And that drives me crazy, too. When I sit there and I listen to something like someone like Janet Yellen talking about uh, the Federal Reserve models, models for what? We've never been here. This is uncharted territory, never in the history of the world have world central banks done what they've done for so long. So there's no there's no yardstick. There's no way to say, well, this is more than likely to happen here. Um, and the, the Fed is stuck. There is no way they're going to be out. Their hands are tied right now, especially if we just we just got bad news out of China with regard to their economy over there. The world's second largest economy is slowing down. The Fed is stuck. They're not going to be doing anything meaningful with regard to raising rates. They're not going to be um, doing anything with their balance sheet this year. I've been on, I've been wrong one time and one time only with regard to the action that the Federal Reserve would take um, since they've been talking about raising rates. So my record with regard to predicting what the Fed would do is honestly second to none uh, in the world. That's the truth. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to be right again here. I think we're going to get one more hike. I think the Fed has to do it. I think the Fed is going to hike rates one more time this year, only not because they want to, but because they have to, to try to, to show the world that they are in some kind of control, probably 25 basis points uh, in September re- regarding the federal funds rate. And that's it. The, be- the balance sheet is going to be left alone. It's going to continue to inflate. The Fed is going to continue to reinvest into the, the long end of the, the yield curve, the bonds that we were talking about before. As for, for as far as the eye can see, the Federal Reserve is going to continue to punish the dollar for as far as the eye can see. Uh, and, and we're all going to pay a price for this moving forward. It's very sad. And speaking of very sad, you mentioned earlier that there'll be a biblical loss of life and pandemonium. 
Could you elaborate on that, please? Are you like referring to war or civil war or strife? <laughs> All of the above, absolutely all of the above here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, when, when people are, again, in a worst case scenario, it, it, let's say we have a bursting of this debt bubble, which we know is a fact and exists here. That would mean very, very simply that we our credit card is maxed out. We cannot continue to borrow from the future anymore. If we cannot borrow cash into existence anymore, the, what happens to the currency is it becomes nearly worthless. We've seen this before. Um, it, it may not matter how many of them you have. You may not be able to go to the store and use these things. Maybe you can use them to for fire, um, fuel or something. Um, but again, this is a, a scenario that has the potential to happen. We've seen it before, but never on this scale. When when a, a, a world reserve currency has been so destroyed and melted down by uh, deliberately by uh, um, the, the a central bank, the Federal Reserve here, it's going to, again, the, because the dollar is the world reserve currency, this, ha this is going to bleed off to every single thing. And all the world central banks are doing the same thing. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. We've never seen this before. This is this is some kind of a thing, again, that they're going to be when, – when this all corrects the fair value, because it's going to happen, this is going to be something they're going to be talking about for thousands of years. Whatever's left, whatever race might be uh, or, or beings might be on the planet at that particular time, um, they're going to say, well, how did they let that happen? How could they have been so stupid? But um, but but again, I, I – I always think of things in a worst case scenario, very bipolar. You have to be prepared for a worst case scenario in any aspect of life here, whether it's I don't care what it is. You have to be ready for that. You have to have the high ground. Um, if it doesn't unfold, well, you know what? You're better off than you were before. If it does unfold, at least you were ready for it. Um, because, again, what is it like if we can no longer transact in whatever currency – you're transacting, and let's say it's a dollars that are now because the debt bubble has burst, uh, has burst. You got the currency, which is now, you know, half its value, a third of its value, a tenth of its value. Who knows what it will be? Who knows what things will cost at that particular point here? Well, stores will be gone. There'll be nothing in the stores. People will not be able to just walk into a store and get a gallon of milk. They will not be able to go to a store and get um, uh, eggs or anything like that, gasoline. Could you imagine? Because these things are priced in dollars, crude oil and gold and silver, what they, their value would be in these massively deflated bills or inflated. It's it's, it's, uh, it's insane to think of it in, in that in that context here. But again, I don't want people to, to sit here and think I'm all doom and gloom here because I'm really not. I, I, I want people to understand that there is a potential that this could unfold in a terrible, terrible way. Hopefully I am absolutely wrong on this. Um, but the way things seem to be going, we seem to be marching right down that path and it's not looking pretty here. It's just not looking pretty with the distortions we were talking about earlier with how the stock market is reacting way different than what the average guy or girl on the street would imagine uh, that it would be. There's no connection. It's not real. There's no price discovery behind it anymore. Um, it's just, you know, these um, people, are, uh, institutions are borrowing cash from the Fed for nothing, using to, using it to speculate in the market, inflating the stock market bubble on the back of the debt bubble here, reinflating a housing bubble here. Um, there are bubbles to the upside, bubbles to the downside. There's nothing in the middle. The middle is a void. What I want people to understand is we're existing in an environment of extremes, um, and that's going to correct to the middle. So we have this, this, and we're going to correct to the middle. What what that middle is going to look like, it's going to be a lot different than what we have now. Um, I'm just very curious about one thing you mentioned earlier, that there's no models for everything we're, everything that's happening. Has not always been the case? You know, in 1999, 08, 1929, 19, 1913, even in 1940, there's always been no model. Because in theory, everything we're facing as an economy, as a nation, who knows what else, is, is always unprecedented. Mm -hmm. So isn't it a sense, you could argue it's just natural cycles, uh, boom and bust, but amplified on steroids. Mm -hmm. that, that That is true. Um, but... 
this scenario, again, where all of the world's central banks are all engaging in the same thing at the same time, this this puts a little different spin on it. So it, it's just so out there. And this is why, again, why the Fed, I think, is going to have to do their rate hike at the Institutes to, to look like they know what they're doing. They never know what they're doing. They always get it wrong. And I challenge everyone who's listening to this to find me one time where they got anything right. These world central banks, once they, once they get in, once they take away the free market, that's the whole issue here. What people need to understand is the 2008 event was simply the market trying to establish fair value. The market had gotten massively overvalued like it is today. Housing had gotten massively overvalued like it is today, although now it's much, much worse. Now, the Fed at that time had some ammunition. They were able to say, okay, we're going to start buying the debt. Now, when the debt becomes no good because the debt bubble bursts, what are they going to do? This They have no model for it. Again, they always had ammunition before. In every instance that you were just talking about, uh, all the previous crashes, they could get in there. They could just buy all the debt. Now they can't anymore. So that's what really makes this time different than any other time before. All right, but um, you also said that when during the crash, in a, in a grocery store, there'll be no milk. But cows are still going to produce milk. Crops are still going to grow. Autumns and seasons and winters and all that are still going to rise. You know, it's still sunset and still sun, sunset. And so, you know, morning and afternoon and all the rest. Mm-hmm. But isn't that some foundation for normality, quote unquote, to return? You know, just because the, just because the stock market's gone to zero doesn't doesn't mean that crops not going to stop germinating and cows are not going to stop producing milk, for example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, so, that's that's all true, absolutely. But how are these things going to make it to the stores if people can't afford to, if, if can't afford to buy buy the fuel? Uh, if if the farmers can't afford to feed the cows, so all this is just going to die off. It's all going. Yeah, these things are still going to happen here, but it all plays into the same thing, where again. This can unfold really ugly, and, and, and these things aren't going to make it to the, to, to the stores. And people have the potential to get violent, as we know. So people t- will do go through extraordinary measures just to survive, to provide for their families, to provide for their children who are hungry, who need things. Um, this is why we have that potential to, for pandemonium to, to develop in the streets. I mean, just look around the world. You get even stupid, nonsensical things like that to how the media distracts us, but they don't look at the greatest threat to humankind. The greatest threat to humankind, bar none, is this debt bubble that we are in. It's greater than nuclear war or any or anything else. I wrote an article a couple of years back, Global Debt and the Human Bubble. Um, just Google it, global debt in the human bubble. And uh, I outlined a lot of these things in that article. It's a short article. It's worth looking at. Um, but, but, it, but that's really it. I mean, no one talks. People want, they want to distract you with whether it's global warming or whether, whether it's North Korea or whether it's even nuclear war. Um, yeah, these are all threats, as I'm sure. But the greatest threat that there's no solution to, none, uh, is the debt bubble that we have right now. There's no way to fix this, unfortunately, because it's gotten so twisted and so, you know, people say, hey, you know what, why can't we just forgive the debt? Well, you know what, then you talk, it's your money. Your money is in people, our money is invested in that, in pension plans and 401ks and everything. You'll be destitute. Sure, let's forgive the debt, but that means you, you people out there that are asking it to be forgiven are going to be wiped out. Um, it's all linked together in a way that is very twisted, very disgusting, and has the potential to unfold in a very disruptive way. Yeah, I remember in 2008 there were some cargo ships from all over the world with food and, and other uh, exports like that. There were the, the whole nas- whole international you know, cargo and logistics chain almost came to a freeze because there's no line of credit. That's and right. These, com- these companies are very capital intensive and no line of credit – no one is willing to pilot. To lend. That's exactly. And, yeah, yes. Uh, I don't know how you drive a boat. What, what's the word for that? But they're <laughs> not willing to <laughs> sa- yeah, sail. Uh, so they're not, not willing to do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, with regards to 401k and, my, and what people can do for preparations, I've always heard, I heard this years ago, that 401ks and other like 
pensions with you know with a company always a bad idea um, because it's it lasts, it's a loss of control. Um, do you do you think with that? Do you agree with that? And the, what, what kind of preparations uh, I, can I, people I, make? I I think I think um, the way things are, I, you need to be invested in something. Okay, how it's whether it's going to be through a four hundred one k plan or something. I think they've been very good to people over the years. But again, it's all right now. It's all part of the machine. It's all part of the machine that has the potential to unfold in a very ugly way. Um, if the Fed did not step in last time and reinflate the debt to reinflate the stock market, people would have been lost everything. Have they gotten everything back? If you stayed invested, sure you have. But the next time is different because the Fed can't get in there and buy everything anymore. It's a, it's a completely different. I think the next time that we get a market meltdown here, it's going to take 50, 60, 70, 100, 200 years to recover. I mean, from the stock market crash of 1929, the market did not recover until – 54 or 50 something it took a long time for the market to recover this time i think it could take four times longer uh and most people won't even be around at that particular time what can the central banks do uh the next time around they've already done everything that they can do they, they've inflated the debt Beyond the point of ridiculousness to prop everything up, they're buying everything. I wrote articles about this. I've been talking about how world central banks are buying everything. That says something. When when they get so desperate, world central banks, that they have to continue to buy everything. And I'll tell you something else that really bothers me. Uh, and I've, I've talked about this, and no one else talks about it. When when, the, when they had the crash last time, and um, all these people were getting thrown out of their houses and becoming destitute, left in the street. The Federal Reserve went in there and they bought all of these toxic assets known as mortgage-backed securities off of the backs of the banks to make them whole. Who made the people whole? Well, meanwhile, the Fed has reinflated a housing bubble and now they're talking about unloading those mortgage-backed securities, which are not so toxic anymore. This doesn't that bother, that should bother you, especially if you're one of these people like you who are one of those who lost your home. The Fed has really given it to you, and I mean badly. Uh, I, I think it's a crime what they've done, but no one talks about it. No one addresses it. It's just like a, it's, an, it's a non-event. You will not hear this probably from anybody else. I think I'm the only guy even talking about it. But it's really the truth here because uh, one of my very, very good friends, one of my very best friends here, um, <laughs> it's, it's a sad story. He um, right at the top of that bubble. Um, he had a few dollars laying around. He went out there and he bought four homes. And I told him, I said. I told him then, I, you know, and I didn't know half as much as what I know now. I said, don't do it. I said, don't do this. Uh, you know, Greg, you're wrong. This is where people need, you need to be buying these things. You, you know, you, I, at the time I was, I wasn't touching any of this stuff. He's like, you need to do this. This is going to secure my future. Well, not only did he lose everything, he ended up getting so destitute that he had to move back home with his mom. I mean, this is how bad it got for people. Um, you know, his marriage dissolved over it. I mean, you name it. And this is one person. This happened to millions and millions and millions of people. Um, and these banks, they they really stuck it to people. They knew. Look, there's no doubt that they knew where this was going at the time. And Ben Bernanke was out there trying to tell people that this was contained. You remember that word? Contained to try to keep people calm. He was doing that on purpose to try to get people to say, okay, you know, everything's going to be okay. Meanwhile, the plan was let's bail out the banks. Let's make sure they're good. And then we'll deal with everything else later. That's really what was going on here. I've had made many friends over the years. Um, who are involved. And I know people at all the big banks. And, and, and I've found out some pretty interesting and sickening things. But look, all of the writing was on the wall then. All of the writing is on the wall now. So history is going to repeat itself, but it's going to be much worse. Yeah, it might be uh, hell on earth for a while. Yeah. Uh, quickly, though, um, you said that it might take 100 years or so to recover I remember some investor, I think some Japanese investor, saying that it's too soon to know what the repercussions are of the 1793 French Revolution. <laughs> wow. I, I just remember yeah. that. I, I just remember that. Uh, but as we wrap this podcast up, Gregory, what are you working on now and uh, what's next for you? You know, I'm just keeping busy, man. I'm doing my thing. I'm getting, um, I'm, I'm blogging. I'm writing articles. I'm, I'm posting stuff on my website, TradersChoice.net. I hope people will go check that out. There's free stuff on there for you. 
Um, I actually, I had some crazy idea this past Saturday. I, I, I don't even know how I got myself involved in this. I decided that I would start maybe opening myself up to doing some one-on-one consultation with people. I'm already, I, I, two weeks solidly booked here. Uh, I have my email box full, and I can't even write back to people. It's pretty sad. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm working on it. Give me a little time. Anyone who's written to me, if you're out here, forgive me. I'm working on it. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this up. It's, it may become overwhelming, but we'll see how a lot plays out moving forward. But I want people to understand that they don't have to lay down here. They do not have to be fleeced. If they just open up one of their eyes uh, and they let their brain work a little bit, they can understand that the environment we're in is not sustainable um, across the spectrum of the financial markets and everything else connected to it with regard to the debt. And you need to be ready for a moment here, which is going to happen rapidly when it does. When, when, when people just turn their back on the debt market, like Alan Greenspan says, and the potential to, uh, for a rapid, a rapid sell-off, uh, we could look at a, 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 a major change in the complete financial landscape in a matter of days. So could this happen tomorrow? Absolutely it could happen tomorrow. Could it happen next year? Sure. Could it go on five more years? I guess it could. Um, but just be ready for it. Yeah, um, I, I agree. But uh, what is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? Just go to my website, traderschoice.net. Everything you need there um, on their page, is, it'll take you to my blogs. It'll tell you how to contact me, whatever you might want to do. And if you do write to me and I don't write back to you right away, forgive me. Um, I'm really running behind here. <laughs> That's all right. But Gregory Manorino, it was great having you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen at home, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below if you're on YouTube and press the bell notification that's right next to it for the latest uploads. Also, if you're watching this on Steemit, give it an upvote and follow. There is plenty more content to come because this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So go out there there today and do something remarkable. How cool is that? Very cool.